Hi, my name is Austin Grigash. I'm a third year kinesiology and education student in the combined program. A fun fact about me is during the quarantine season, I picked up this little hobby of mixing or DJing or whatever you want to call it. It's been a lot of fun and it's definitely been good to get my mind off school from time to time as you guys, I'm sure you guys can relate. But uh, without further ado, well, let's let's get right into this video. So before you guys continue watching, I suggest you watch the link attached below just to watch the injury and kind of have more context behind this video. So we're gonna go right into the uh, mechanism of injury. As we see, multiple forces are kind of applied uh, in this injury. Uh, so the body position, we see we see the two hockey players who are in the NHL, obviously, and their opponents chasing, going full speed uh, towards a puck, um, in which one was kind of sandwiched between the board and the other opponent. The other opponent decided to shoulder check that person to kind of get uh, to, to get an advantage towards the puck. And what happened is that a person. Uh, they are pushed into the board in which the shoulder and their face kind of went over the board as this is where all the other uh, hockey players on the sidelines were standing and then their face and shoulder connected with a pole that kind of started the plastic lining that protects the audience from the puck uh, in which his head was already flexed on the contact leaving the cervical spine very vulnerable. When he fell to the ground he was completely unconscious, he was on his belly not moving whatsoever, it was very kind of traumatic and scary to watch. So when we talk about environmental factors relating to this injury uh you know you got to think that they're with hockey you're on skates you're on ice and so uh you're moving a lot faster than you know the normal human body movement would be and this as a result increases the risk of uh the injury and also increases the intensity of the injury as well naturally so that's how environmental factors kind of tie in with this injury when we talk about the direction, uh, the type of force, and the intensity of the force, uh, we got to remember, again, this is multiple uh, forces being applied at once kind of thing, so we're going to have to break it down a bit. So the first force that was applied was the shoulder check, and this was a high mass uh, because, you know, the body, a full body is going into the person. So it's a high mass, lower velocity, compressive diffuse force uh, because the person was being compressed against the board when he was hit. Uh, and then that leads into the second injury, in, or the second type of force, sorry, uh, which is a high velocity because they're skating forward, uh, a low mass because the pole is kind of doesn't take up the full face, you know, it's relatively smaller of a mass. Um, so this is a focal kind of injury that is a sheer force. And the reason why it's a sheer force is because when the person was kind of pressed against the board and they had their shoulders and face leaned over, when they're moving this way, the pole kind of had them go in the opposite direction and that can lead a lot of tension in kind of this area and a lot of damage as well. So we, when we go into the equipment factors, we got to think this is the NHL, this is the top of the line professional equipment that is like checked to be registered every game. So there's not a lot of lack of, of lack of equipment factors that, you know, kind of go into this, this injury. Uh, it's more or less kind of the fact that they were wearing good helmets and good shoulder pads possibly could have saved their life in this situation uh, as some of the force that would have been fatal was maybe absorbed or dispersed within the helmet and shoulder pads. So with that, we're going to go right into the uh, hypothesis of the injuries that occurred. So I would be very confident that a concussion, a severe concussion at least occurred. I would also suspect that cervical vertebral damage uh, also occurred as well. Uh, as that spine, you know, that cervical spine was vulnerable as his head was flexed. And when we talk about that in the body position, uh, when, it, when it hit, you know, so we have those suspected at least. I would also suspect some nerve damage that could happen. Uh, I would, you know, suspect contusions happening from that compression force in the upper body and maybe on the face as well. And with that, you know, skull fractures could have occurred clavicular or glenohumeral. Um, joints could have been dislocated or, or sprained as well. You know, that compressive force from the pole could have also broken the clavicle. But the, the big one here is definitely nerve damage as well, with that being that cervical spine and head trauma as well. Like, th that makes it an immediate uh, medical emergency. Now we're going to move into my estimated time for return to play. And honestly, I don't have a definite answer as there's a lot of variability with all these possible different injuries. With concussions alone, it's a physician that has to to give the proper time frame. Uh, it all depends on the severity of each kind of injury and how many injuries occurred. It's also important to consider the processes that are taken. You know, they may differ between different specialists. Um, you wanna make sure all the steps of healing are not moved through too quickly. 
Uh, and that's even if the athlete is even able to physically play in that sport again in a professional level. Um, you know, with that nerve damage or broken bones or whatever, that could end a, end a career and that might not even allow a, a player to return to the sport in that in that sense. Uh, all of these time frames are kind of determined by the medical services and physicians. Um, but again, I would predict that it'd take at least a year to two years to return to play. And I'm, I would assume that as that time of recovery is kind of um, made, uh, I would expect it to change over time with all these different factors uh, in the long term kind of changing the outcome of the recovery. So without that, thank you guys, or without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I hope you guys take care.